On the 31st of August, Lieutenant Von Open reported back to Hemo, asking for reinforcements and a machine gun. Having just driven off a British mountain contingent, he felt a force could hit the Ugandan railroad. A discussion between Major Kraut, Captain Schultz, and Lieutenant Open to carry out the attack after Warbrick's order was made. Two additional machine guns from the 1st Feld Company and Captain Schultz would lead the column with 13th Feld Company. Departing the next day, the 1st of September, to hit the Ugandan Railroad. This move was reported to British Nairobi by local agents. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Hardingham's section from B Company of the 1st King's African Rifles had taken over Lieutenant Davies' mounted patrol of the Mzima Springs area. The area was crisscrossed with water features and thick with prickly brush thorn bushes. He and his 24 men had built a camp on the 29th or the 30th of August, which was built north of where Old Turish and Tesevo rivers meet. A good vantage point, as the brush is less overgrown, several native kraals, a kraal is an African livestock enclosure, were next to the Old Turish River, and to the north is a large hill. Schultz's column, having struggled through the thorn brush on the morning of the 3rd of September, decided to follow the river. Hardingham's pickets were now able to see the incoming German column. Schultz gathered his column on the river, gave precious time for Hardingham to concentrate his men, prepare for a fighting withdrawal, and send a runner to Tesavo. The German column, after receiving fire, had to stop to deploy his four heavy machine guns, forcing Hardingham's blocking section to retire. Hardingham continued to delay Schultz's column for the entire duration of its advance. Schultz, when contact was made, would halt his column, deploy his superior firepower, and did not squander the lives of his African troops, but refusing to charge and scatter Hardingham's forces into the bush bought valuable time for the British to organize and deploy troops to intercept Schultz's column. Hardingham's runner arrived on the evening on the 4th to Sasavo. The information was immediately relayed to the new area commander, Major A.A. A. James of the 29th Punjabis. Major James had arrived on the 1st of September and had only been in command of the area for two days. He immediately ordered his two companies of the 29th Punjabis with a naval deck gun artillery piece under Captain Skinner and Captain Poninger from Voy to Tesevo, and the King's African Rifles at Maktao Bara Imtito Andi to send forces to pincer the German column. At 8.20 a.m., another runner arrived to Tesevo to report Harningham had stalled the German column 15 miles away from Tesevo, at 10 a.m., another runner was sent to report the Germans were 10 miles away. In that time, the following British units were deployed and made contact with Schultz's column on the 6th of September. To Sabo, with Major A.A. A. James, bringing units of the 29th Punjabis and King's African Rifles and a naval artillery piece. At Moktau, the 3rd King's African Rifles Mounted Infantry Detachment Lieutenant Davies, 20 men. At Burra, a mixed unit under Captain Saunders of 139 men. In Tito Andi, B Company, 4th King's African Rifles, Lieutenant Oldenfield, 110 men, and Nairobi sent A Company, 4th King's African Rifles, Lieutenant Foster, 125 men. Both Schultz and Hardingham would continue to exchange fire. The sources don't give any casualties for this day of fighting, but on the 6th of September, British Indian troops would see their first action in East Africa.